Well, this is Rick and I'm without Sean at the moment. And you can see that I have uh, swapped the warm skies from my Spanish uh, hacienda for the grey skies and about to rain clouds in uh, Bournemouth, where I'm visiting my family for a week. We will be doing a podcast next week. Uh, but in the meantime, I wanted to just give you my two penneth on what's been going on at OpenAI and the, I think you can only describe it as a soap opera. Uh, and the revolving door uh, effect for Sam Altman. Now, just to put this into a bit of context, if you don't uh, haven't really kept up with all of the news, uh, just over a week ago, the not-for-profit board fired Sam Altman uh, unexpectedly. Now, Sam Altman runs the for-profit company that is the commercial entity that sits underneath the not-for-profit for the good of humanity board because OpenAI was established in 2015 as a um, as a not-for-profit we're going to save the world from artificial intelligence kind of uh, effective ultra uh, effective altruism business which uh, which is what had been running up until now but it has created tensions between this uh, mission and profit what comes first well uh, the uh, the OpenAI not-for-profit board didn't like some of the things that Altman was doing and felt he was moving too fast, so they fired him. Uh, that created a huge backlash and a massive amount of support, plus pressure from the investors. Investors, because you remember that, uh, or you probably remember that Microsoft have put in over ten billion dollars and really tied themselves to the mast of OpenAI and ChatGPT for all of their own strategy when they try and take on what Google are doing. And um, and also all the staff at OpenAI threatened to leave and over the weekend, within a couple of days of Altman being fired, uh, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, came out and said, well, we'll give you a job, Sam. And he was going to head up this new AI uh, business within Microsoft and 500 or 600 of the thousand employees for open AI or threatened to just like join him at Microsoft So it was all basically heading for some enormous shit show Of course in the meantime, you know chat GPT is just this huge success um, And in fact, it's done so well since they announced what they call GPTs uh, on developer day that uh, they've stopped taking the subscriptions now because they just can't handle the volume anyway within a couple of days it all reversed around and what happened was that the not-for-profit board were all let go right so all of the ideologists and uh, philosoph you know um, academic kind of uh, representation on the not-for-profit board they all left and have been replaced by commercial interests you've got a guy who's ex Salesforce you've got the ex uh, US Treasury secretary um, and now that the not-for-profit board is being run by a commercial board of directors Altman has been reinstated as the CEO of the for-profit bit of uh, OpenAI. So he's kind of gone back to normal and all of those that, that sacked him have gone. So it's completely reversed uh, around. And the thing is that whilst it's interesting to kind of like follow the politics of the business shenanigans and the movements around, there is a really important point that I would want to stress to anybody that's following this, which is that capitalism has beaten safetyism. Okay, so capitalism is like making money using technology for profits and OpenAI had a mission which was to protect humanity from the rampant surge of out of control artificial intelligence and those forces have fallen in the favour of the capitalist, the for profit side and the safetyists have gone. And um, we've been here before because two years ago you may remember that a, a, a lady called Frances Hagen Haugen, who was an ex-Facebook whistleblower talked used this phrase of meta as in or, and Mark Zuckerberg put profits before public safety when she was giving evidence around how Instagram had uh, developed technology to take advantage of behaviors particularly within teenage girls uh, to their detriment and so this notion of profit before safety, before public safety, has come up again and is really the only conclusion, it's the only, it's the only conclusion I can, make, I can take from what's been going on, uh, open AI. Now, it's a subject I think that next week when Sean and I record the next episode of uh, Big Tech, Little Tech, we will undoubtedly discuss. Um, this is a story that's unfolding almost daily and it's, uh, it's difficult to sort of follow up. I think it's probably better that we just take a step back and watch it from a distance and see where it ends up but right now uh, the only thing we can take away from this uh, soap opera is capitalism 
has beaten safetyism. Anyway, that's all for me now. Somebody's just about to play the bongos next to me, which isn't necessarily helping, and I'm gonna get in before it starts raining. So I look forward to seeing you all in the next week or so when we do the next episode of Big Tech, Little Tech.